Elon Musk did it. He just dropped the open source version of Grok into the wild. And we're going to talk about if it was a good move, if it was a bad move, if it's made the world a better place, if it's going to affect the way you run your business even one iota. This may be an absolute game changer, or maybe it's just a whimper that no one's going to pay attention to. Let's find out. Fire up the theme. First, we need to start with the backstory of Grok and Elon Musk's relationship with OpenAI. It all began in the mid-2010s when he invested money in the OpenAI Foundation. Now, remember, this is critical. OpenAI was originally a nonprofit organization. He invested money under the belief that they were going to develop open source AIs and tools that would help the world, which would raise the bottom, which means the poorest people in the world would have the same access to the tools as the richest people in the world. A couple of years ago, what happened? OpenAI realized that they needed more money than they could privately fundraise, so they switched to a for-profit model. This is why ChatGPT is $20 a month, and the API costs up to $0.04 cents to ask a single prompt or a single question. This really makes a difference, and this irked Elon Musk. So a few weeks ago, he finally filed a lawsuit and said, this was supposed to be open source. Now you're charging for it. This was not what I invested money in. I want to reverse things, roll back time. OpenAI fired back and said, number one, you tried to acquire us in 2018. You were trying to acquire us and make us part of Tesla, which we didn't want. That's why you're upset now. Bitter almonds, you're upset, you're disappointed. No one cares about Grok. And one other point came out, which is that you tell us that you want our tool to be open source, but Grok AI is hidden behind a paywall. No one has access to it. No one uses it. No one's even heard about it. You're saying one thing and doing another. This is an interesting position. Elon Musk's response was to then go, okay, fine, I'll make Grok open source. It's a little strange to do it after you get called out, but he says I have to be consistent with my argument, so that's what I'm going to do. That's the public reason why Grok AI went open source. I have my own beliefs, which I covered in a previous video last week, that I think the real reason is that no one was paying attention to Grok. Now people are. Less than 24 hours ago, Elon Musk finally released the Grok AI on the GitHub repository, and that's what we're going to talk about. There's a couple things that are really important. Number one, this is not the Grok AI Assistant. The Grok AI Assistant is not open source. You still don't have access to it. As a non-premium Twitter user, I don't have access to it. I just checked. I went and logged in and said, oh, maybe they're going to let everyone use this tool now. They're saying it's free for the world. It's out there. Absolutely not. The second thing to understand is that this is not the same model. Grok AI, the assistant model you talk to inside of Twitter, is very different than this model. This is the original version before they began fine-tuning it. So this is from about six or seven months ago, maybe around October of 2023. Let's talk about the model itself. The model is huge. Most open source models range in size from 7 to 70 B. That's billion pieces of data inside of the model. Based on the size of your computer, many people can only run the smaller, leaner, more efficient models at the 7 B end of the spectrum, and really powerful computers can handle 70 B. Grok, is 314 billion. It's more than four times bigger than anything else out on the market in the open source world. That means I literally don't know of any computer that can test this model. I checked all of the tools out there that I use, all the tools I talk about, all the open source repositories. I checked LM Studio to see if they even measure if it's possible to install in anyone's system. Nobody. I'm sure a computer out there exists that can test this model, but it's so big, it's similar in size to ChatGPT 4 that has to run on multiple servers, which means nobody can test the model. That's what's very interesting. It's out there, but you can't use it. So I'm not really sure what the goal is here other than to say, hey, we made it open source. It's not our fault your computer can't run it. Eventually, somebody will load this model and spend a huge amount of money to put on private servers and run it. I'm not that interested. When they first announced this, I had a feeling that this wasn't going to lead anywhere, and it really hasn't. I just wanted to get this on your radar. Some things to know about Grok is that it's built on mixture of experts, which means there are multiple different AI minds or areas of expertise that are merged together to generate answers. We've often speculated that's how ChatGPT4 runs. We know for sure it's how Mistral is built, where they have multiple different experts. When you ask a question, it determines which part of the AI answers the question. This way, it doesn't have to parse its whole database. It goes, this is something from section 1 of 14. Now we limit the size of the response we need to use, which means if you have 14 servers that hold your entire AI, only one of those servers gets called and allows you to limit 
or control the cost because that's really where AI is getting expensive is in the server costs and in the electricity for server costs. The upfront cost is the most expensive part of AI servers. One of the special things about this release is that including the weights and architecture under the Apache 2.0 license. This means they're giving out a part of the model that even most open source AIs don't do. It's kind of the secret sauce. This is the model from October 2023, so it's not the current weights and measures. It's not the current trained version of the model, but this is very close. This is certainly the most powerful, most data released about an AI up to this point in time. But we have this problem that it's unusable. It's trained on a huge amount of text data, but has been fine-tuned for any particular task. It's 314 billion parameters, Mitch, your expert's model, with 25% of the weights active on a given token which means any question is going to activate one-fourth of the model. It was trained by XAI using a custom stack on top of JX and Rust in October 23. That's the technical answer. The long and the short of this is that it's a model that gives more data than anyone else has before, but it's untestable at this point because no one has a computer that's strong enough to test it. While it's an interesting thing to do, I don't think it's going to change anything about the landscape of AI. I think that this was done specifically for this lawsuit and to get attention for Grok. And unfortunately, it's a whimper. This isn't going to hit a lot of news stories. I'm barely covering this story. It's interesting. And I mentioned it last week, said I would cover it when it actually came out and that I would test it, but it's untestable at this point. The most important thing for me and what I cover on this channel is usability, what you can use to grow and accelerate your business, which means I only care about practical use and practical implementation of AI and automation tools. This tool is not practical. This tool is not usable. And there is nobody singing its praises other than people who've read a white paper and said, this sounds really interesting. But I haven't heard any who's actually used the model and been impressed by it. I don't know of a single person who uses the Grok AI inside of Twitter. Not one. I've never seen someone talk about it. I've never seen someone review it. I've never seen someone demonstrate it. I've never seen someone show results of it on different tests. Until I see this model on different platforms, until I see it started getting tested in the chatbot arena, which I covered a few days ago, and you can see all about that right here in this video, there's no way to know if this model is any good, which means for now, it's not worth your time. Maybe you guys think I'm wrong and you think this is interesting and this is a game changer. I know Elon Musk has his massive fan. If you found a way to run this AI on your system, please let me know in the comments right below. If you found this interesting, useful, informative, please hit the like button. That's how this channel grows. We just crossed 1,000 subscribers. Now we're on the mission to hit 2,000. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this in your feed, hit the subscribe button so that more of my content appears on the homepage of your YouTube. And if you hit that bell button, well, gosh, that's the absolute best. You'll get notified every single time I post a video and I want you to see everything I create. I absolutely appreciate you staying all the way to the end of this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching one of my videos. Hit the like button and then I've got a couple of sweet videos that I think you're gonna like. I've got one here and another one over here. You're gonna love them.